Hello everyone, welcome to a, another session for the Aussie Live Conference for 2015. Today we are, hi Carol, welcome. Today we've had many, many wonderful presentations, uh, one which is Joe has just finished, so thanks Joe for being able to get here so quickly. Carol, did you want to take over? <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Ness. Sorry, I was a little late getting organised there. It's, it's tough when you're doing three things at once. However, look, it's with great pleasure that we bring you another presentation from Ness, and this time producing digital text for the Australian curriculum. Now, I know you're going to be excited about this, and, and Ness is very skilled in what she does. So she will be fine, even without me. <laughs> but we'll do the usuals here and say thank you to the sponsors and supporters. And make sure that you come back on a different date uh, for the Australia E-Series. I see that Shingo's in the audience. He might like to tell you when there's another webinar coming up in Community Connect. They're on Thursday nights in the Blackboard Collaborate room. We are delighted to be connected with the Learning Revolution Project and of course when you exit each room you are asked for a survey. Now I'm not sure how many of you have had time to fill them in as you exit and then race along the virtual corridors to get to the new room, but we urge you to do that because it's really good feedback for us. Our usual where are you map is uh, here for you. Have we got those turned on? Yes we do and we've got the mics turned on as well. So you'll be able to interact with Ness today. So don't be shy. If you want to speak your question or comment, then just click on the talk button. I'm sure she'll be delighted. If you're not sure how to do that and you want to sit back and absorb everything and make notes in the text chat, we'll have a look at that as well. So let's move on to uh, hearing from Ness. And yes, yeah, she's definitely an Aussie holic. Uh, and we're listening now for producing digital text for the Australian Curriculum by Vanessa Crouch. Take it away, Ness. Thanks, Carol. Uh, yes, it's been a very busy day popping in and out of sessions for a lot of people that are in the room. So thank you to all those people making a fantastic e effort to visit all the sessions as much as possible. Uh, as the title suggests, I'm looking mainly at, at a sort of a practical session in the sense that I want to share with you some of the tools I use to help create digital text with my students, for my students, um, in line with the, the Australian curriculum. Uh, for those of you that are listening in from other countries, the Australian curriculum is a relatively new concept. Um, it's something that only a few years ago the, the different state governments agreed that they would uh, use one curriculum across Australia with the exception of New South Wales who slightly done their own thing, but still using the Australian curriculum as their basic foundation. Um, I guess it's, it's something that's really important. We all need to understand that in the Australian curriculum there is what is called an information communication technology general capability. Now what this is is it's a capability that all students are expected to develop from their, their schooling from foundation to year 10 or 12. Um, so this capability is expected to be integrated across all curriculum areas, not just in a technology class. So if it's the English um, syllabus you're looking at, for example, it's actually um, the English Literacy and Creating Text section of the, the uh, outcomes and if you're working in New South Wales, it comes under the writing and representing in the English curriculum. Uh, all of the other areas have that same focus. I'm just going to take us out for a little quick tour of the Australian curriculum. First of all, I've dropped in a link for those of you who want to have a look for yourselves. I've just dropped in a link for the English curriculum, uh, so I'm just going to do an app share and go out and show you what that looks like. And we are here. Just a little thumbs up before smiley face in the text chat if you can see my screen. 
Yeah, it may not work on mobile devices. That's why I've sent you the the link so that you can have a look at yourself. Now, I've actually filtered the content here to only show um, those outcomes that relate to um, the information communication technology general capability. So here in foundation, which is our kindergarten or prep uh, level, you can see that there are actually two outcomes in the English syllabus that relate to um, digital text. And very specifically, um, the one on the left hand side relating to language, it actually says understand concepts about print and screen, including how books, film and simple digital texts work and so on. I'm just going to go down further, which this will probably scroll through very fast. I'm going to go to the Year 5 content. What you will notice here is that we no longer have two. We actually have five different outcomes that are related to the digital text. Uh, the digital text and creating and producing and using digital text. Okay, I'm just going to quickly swap over to the science curriculum and I will drop that link into the chat as well for those who want to have a look a little bit later on. Um, I'm trying not to spend a whole lot of time in the um, app share because I know that uh, our people using um, digital devices won't always see this very well. So even in science, I chose science as a, an example because I, I thought about history and said, oh, yeah, it worked, but not quite so much. It isn't until year five that we get a specific skill related to digital technology. However, um, in the, the pre-year five years, there are links to um, using digital technologies, not just um, creating. So you can see it's a science inquiry skill and a communicating skill. And if we continue down to, sorry, I'm just having a bit of trouble there. And the scrolling happening. Let's do it this way. Okay, now in year nine, we still have the same one, but the content description and the achievement standard is quite different. Okay, I will come back to the room now. All right, so that's just a quick tour of um, understanding why we need to be aware that we have to be able to, as educators, um, teach students how to create digital text. And that brings us to different tools that I have used and do use to help my students um, to produce digital text. So what I'm going to do now is just go through and talk about each of these and describe them a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to spend a little bit of time sharing with you some of those examples so you can see what that looks like in, in a real context. And I, I will do the same thing. I'll add the, the link to the um, chat for those people that are on um, tablets and mobile devices. So the first one I've got listed here is Storybird. Storybird is a great um, digital storytelling tool. In particular, I think it has a lot of merit for being used with younger children. Uh, but then again, it still ha is applicable to uh, high school students as well because really you're only limited by your creativity with Storybird. And how Storybird works is there are um, there are a number of uh, uh, pictures that you can use that are already there, or you can create your own and upload your own and add some simple text. And I will show you an example of a joint construction that I did with my class a couple of years ago. And they were a year, I think they were a year three class um, that we created together. 
Next is Easily, which um, is basically an infographic creator. Now, I like Easily. Um, it's, it's fun to use. It's a, it's a tool I would use with children from probably about year four onwards because um, it is a little bit more complicated to use than some of the other infographic tools that are available. And I will talk about another one that I use with younger children. Uh, easily, it's, it's really simple. You can um, sign up quite quickly and quite easily. And it produces beautiful uh, either digital or you can download and then print uh, infographics. Next, I've got Wikispaces. Now, <laughs> yesterday I went to log into Wikispaces, my Wikispaces account classroom, or my account that I'd used with um, my students for the last couple of years. And obviously, because I haven't been in the classroom this year, I haven't, I only just realised that they've stopped giving free spaces for education, you now have to sign up for what they call a classroom. So I can't actually show you what we had on there, <laughs> but I can show you what Wikispaces Classrooms is. And uh, I will be using it from now on because it allows the opportunity for students to contribute um, their work in a digital format that other people can see and use. Next, we've got Pictochart. Pictochart is another infographic creator. This is the one that I prefer to use with uh, younger children. I think that if you have a group of fairly tech savvy and uh, creative and well trained year two students, you, they could certainly use Pictochart because it is a very simple tool to use and I will that's one of the ones I plan on sharing with you. Prezi, I'm a lover of Prezi. It's a fun, fun way of um, sharing thoughts and information. It is a little bit complicated to use, so it's not really that suitable for pre, um, for what I would call the infants, kids, so K to two or foundation to two. Uh, but once again, I guess if you had, were able to train them well enough and give the time to teaching how to use Prezi, certainly year two students could use it. Okay, next we've got Thinglink, which is another one of my favourite tools to use with um, learners because it's very visual. It allows you to be quite creative in what you want to do and basically what you have is a picture that you add um, tags to which are linked to either photos, videos, information and other things. Uh, it's really handy. I've used that a few in, for a few different tasks for students. So see you've got GarageBand. Now, the reason I've got GarageBand in there is because last year I had a particularly gifted group of musicians in my class and some of them were, well, some of them were very, very capable of um, creating their own music and their own songs to go. Uh, Garage Band, it's an, it's an Apple um, app or tool. You can only get it on iPads or Macs, sadly, um, but it is well, well worth it. I've had a play around with it and I actually sound like I can make music. Uh, which is which is an achievement. Um, so I think that when we're thinking about digital text, we, we need to make sure that we're not limiting ourselves to written and visual text because if a child can write a song or a poem and put it to music and add to their voice, that is still a digital text, in my opinion anyway. So I wanted to add that one in um, because I think it's a really fun way of getting particularly musically creative students engaged in learning. Where are we up to? Okay, good old Google Docs and, and the whole suite of Google apps. Um, I'm not sure I can say much more other than very, very easy to use collaborative tools and children generally are able to use them quite easily. Okay, Weebly for education. 
Uh, as a teacher, you can sign up for an education account on Weebly. And basically, what Weebly is is a website creator. And I will share with you uh, a website that some of my students created last year. Uh, it's very basic, obviously, but um, they wanted to present their information as a website. So I said, OK, fine, let's do it. And I was able to help them in five minutes. Yes, generally better than us, Christian, you are right. Uh, I was I was able to give able to give them a quick five minute lesson on this is what you do, and they they really really did well with it. I was very proud of them. Okay, Slidely um, is another really good tool. Now this this uh, uh, tool is basically where you can put photos and music together to make a little pretty presentation. Um, so the beauty of this is you can either use uh, images that you find on Google or wherever, or you can upload your own images. So if you've got students that have created uh, a PowerPoint and you save those that PowerPoint as JPEG files, you can upload them to Slidely and put music to them, and it becomes a lovely little presentation. Very confused. Uh, Powtoon, I haven't talked about that yet. Powtoon is actually one of it is a website on its own, but it also uh, is available as part of the Google apps. If you want to go to your drive and connect to more apps and search Powtoon, you can connect through there as well. And this is a really great way of creating uh, digital text that's a lot of fun, and the children uh, really have enjoyed using this. Um, and the last one is VoiceThread that I've got there. Uh, it's, it's quite amazing that in the last few presentations, um, a few of the presentations I've been to today, that quite a lot of people have mentioned voice threads. And um, yeah, it's a really fantastic tool and can be used in so many different ways um, that it's really got endless possibilities. And I, I just really enjoy um, I just really enjoy uh, watching and and watching what the children watching and listening to what the children can do in responding with VoiceThread. Okay, so are there any questions about those tools that I've just talked about there, or has anyone got any other tools that they think could help? Uh, okay, so Danielle, what VoiceThread does basically, you can upload. Uh, photos or slides or, or whatever, as many as you like. And what, what, what happens is people can make comments. They're either written comments or voice comments. Um, that's generally what it's used for. But I have also used it to as a digital storytelling um, tool where children create pictures and voice over parts of the story and then have another picture and do the rest of the story. So you can use it in lots of different ways. I tend to use it as a, um, a, a you know, a lot of different ways, and it's it's really it's only limited by your imagination. Does that help, Danielle? Okay, no worries. Um, all right, now, what am I? Yeah, that's true, uh, Christy. Edmodo um, is really a, a, a learning management system is the best way of describing it. Um, it's not something that kids can set up by themselves. It is great as a learning environment. So if a teacher wants to set up Edmodo, particularly in a primary school, um, you would have to certainly have some some support from your principle to do this because uh, it's something that most schools would already probably have some sort of learning management system anyway to, that you're supposed to use. Um, yeah, Edmodo can, is, a, is a really good resource and I, I certainly think so, but in the context, um, 
of using it with children, it's more just that learning management system where as a teacher you can post things for them to discuss or um, give them space to upload work and things like that. Okay, now I'm just going to check um, my links here. Great. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuck at, <laughs> slip out to the uh, app share again and I'm going to first share uh, Storybird with you. Now, I'm not sure, I'm hoping that if I share this link, I'm pretty sure it's not private, <laughs> but I'll put it in. I'm pretty sure for those people that are on devices that you'll be still be able to see what is there by clicking on that link. Hmm, why does it keep going straight to there? Okay, so this is a story bird I created a few years ago um, with a class. Now what, what I did here, this was a basically a joint construction and modelling on how we can use Storybird and then what I got the students to do is create in small groups their own Storybird. So we were really learning about how we can describe uh, and use adjectives. That's basically what the point was of this, um, this task and, and really wanted to focus on, okay, let's look at something and talk about what we see and how we can describe that. So you can see here the cover, it's called In the Forest. Um, and that's basically what we decided to call it because when we when we went through it, it basically um, came down to these are our ideas. Down the bottom here, you can actually see, if I click on one of these, it will change the format, hopefully not too slowly. There we go. Um, the what it looks like. Now you can see that this is a premium uh, option. So I just have a free account so I obviously can't use that. So I don't want that as my choice. But I'm going to move on anyway. Uh, don't want my, okay, so here's our first page. So we, we've done a lot of reading about rainforests and we've looked at a few pictures and this is a picture we found that to us really produced an image of the rainforest and you can see there we just created a simple few lines that described a forest. And then next we had the same picture from the beginning and we talked about what we could see. And what I got the kids to do here, which is why you can't see any text there, is that I got them in their small groups just to come up with their own way of describing. And we just talked about how we could do that. And from there the children went off and, and created their own story birds. Okay, coming back. All right, so story birds, great fun. Lots of possibilities there. Uh, the next tool I want to show you is one that I tried to show yesterday but it's just, it wasn't playing the game but it's, it's being nice to me today so I'm very excited by that. And this is one that I can't share because I haven't actually published it yet because it's not a completed um, infographic so I just want to show people how, it, how easy it is to use really and how it can change your world when it comes to students creating digital text. So for those who want the link to pick to chart, just pick to chart .com and it, yeah, it's going to work. Okay, let me get that sharing going again. Okay, now I try not to scroll too quickly because that is a, often something that I am guilty of when it comes to app sharing. At the top here you can see that when I hover over the, the block that it asks me to click to select the block. Quite simply you just click and then it is an editable block of text. 
You can see uh, below that there are some other areas that I haven't filled out. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom because this is where I want to show you how you can change. So I'm going to click to select the block. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to double click and I'm going to change what this uh, pie chart, uh, donut chart, sorry, looks like. So at the moment, it's, it's a little donut. These are the types of graphs you can show. I'm going to give it a title and I'm going to call it Rept Reptiles. And here I'm going to call it Apples. Tiles. Now, um, I'm going to just add a few more numbers. So we're going to have snake, let's put 20 or 20 cent. Um, let's put wizard. And I'm going to put 30 percent. And my brain is struggling. Whoops, not 2,030 percent. And my brain is struggling for another reptile. Um, any ideas, people? Please help. <laughs> um, another reptile. Brain, brain, brain. Uh, let's just put an amphibian in, even though I know it's not a reptile. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually going to change how that looks because I want this to actually look like a pie chart. And now you'll notice that that has changed quite significantly. So I'm going to update my chart. And what you can see now is it now has a, a title. And when I hover over, you can see 30, 20, and 70. And it's a really, really simple tool to use, basically. It's simple, as simple as clicking and moving. You add and change what's there by clicking on all of these tools over at the side. You've got a lot of different tools that you can choose from, so your charts. You can put videos in. You can put maps in. You can change how it looks. You can add your own text. You can see that they come up here. There's lots of options. Really, really fun and simple. Yeah, I'm, I'm becoming a bigger fan of picture chart because as a teacher, my plan is to create some infographics that I can then use in guided reading or I can use as part of my HSIE or my science lessons and I've got those forever. I don't, I can just update them when I need to and, and use them either digitally or you can download them as well. Okay, now the next one. I want to, well, I, there's not much point really sharing it, but I will put the link in the chat for you. It's the Wikispaces classroom. And like I said, I didn't realise that they'd taken away my free class, my, my free um, Wikispace for my, that I was using for my class because I haven't used it yet this year. But I've just set up this, this classroom and there's nothing there at this point in time, but I will. Um, set it up a little bit better in the future now that I know that it can be set up as a classroom. So if you are looking at using a wiki, uh, I prefer wiki spaces just because I like the layout and the format, but there's others like uh, PB wiki, which stands for peanut butter wiki, um, which is also free as far as I know still. I have used that in the past. And hi Peggy, welcome. It is a, a great tool, um, but I just prefer the look of Wikispaces to PB Wiki. And if anyone has knows any other wikis that can be used, please put those in. Um, a wiki, by the way, for those people who aren't familiar, is basically a learning space or a space where uh, members of the community can add and edit 
text on a page. It's just like Wikipedia where if you are a member of Wikipedia, you can log in and change and add stuff at your will. But a wiki space is, and a classroom space is really for sharing learning. And it's a really good way of um, getting kids collaborating as well. Okay. So, how are we going for time? Great. Not too long. Uh, the next one I wanted to share was um, a thing link. Now, what I have here for you, I will give you the link to this one in the chat before I go to the app share. This is just um, an example of a uh, one of the digital texts that some students in my class produced. I shared this one yesterday as well. Uh, so the children were asked as part of their HSIE work to um, basically they were asked, they, they, it was all about geography, so they had to demonstrate their understanding of Australian geography. And to do that, what they were asked to do, when I hover over here, you'll see a bunch of little icons appear. What they were asked to do was, number one, tag all the states. They had to tag uh, the capital cities and if possible get the capital cities in the correct position or as close as possible. And then they were asked if they could to add the position of any important um, natural geographical features. So for example the arrow up here, if I click on it, is labelled Great Barrier Reef. So that's just a simple text to say we know the Great Barrier Reef is here. This one here is Uluru and they actually found a video on YouTube that they could link um, Brisbane, Queensland and so on. So this group of kids did a pretty good job. I was pretty pleased. Uh, this is obviously a simple way of um, for them to <coughs> excuse me, for them to, to show their knowledge but a digital text does not have to be complicated. And you can see here that I'm currently logged in as in ThingLink Teacher. So when you sign up to ThingLink, you can actually sign up as a teacher and that allows you to create accounts for students and it just generates um, student accounts for you. I am still using the free account. I've not upgraded to need to use more than what I have. Uh, I think I have 40 students in, in here, I think I had two classes worth of students listed, so I think probably about 45 to 50 students listed. Um, you can look at your stats as well, and your stream is just a picture of what are the, the people you follow, and you are automatically, um, once you create your students, you automatically follow your students, um, and any, anyone else that you've, you've found some things that you like. So I follow, I actually follow ThingLink, so some of their stuff appears as well. Really simple tool to use. It's just about uploading and adding tags. Okay, now I'm just going to go back and check the text. Chat for any questions? No. Oh, thanks, Joe. I missed Iguana. <laughs> um, okay. So before I before I show you anything else, is there uh, are there any other comments or questions people have? No. Great. Okay, so the next one I want to show you uh, is actually a, a website, a Weebly site. Now, I'll just grab this. Now, this, <laughs> this little website only has uh, one website created on it at this point in time, um, thanks to my wonderful bunch of, of learners who wanted to make a website and was super excited when I said yes. <laughs> um, but it is a very basic website. 
but it achieved the purpose. And the purpose was for them to communicate basically in an information report what they knew, they learned about uh, Saltwater National Park, which is a national park on the, well, I guess it's almost mid-north mid -north coast or even close to the central coast. It's down near Taree on the New South Wales coast. Um, and, oh no, why are we doing this? I'm sorry. Okay, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into the, I'm actually, it's, it's having a bit of a, an issue this afternoon showing it. So what I'm actually in is the editing tool section um, of the actual how you create the website. So I'll just show you through there. So what this, this was a group of three students and they were given several areas they had to make sure they covered. Um, they obviously found some pictures. They found, they researched and created their text. And I'll just go down there. They found, it was a really interesting project for them because they found it difficult to find a lot of information about, particularly the historical information about the park. Um, and uh, these are, well, there's two year three students and a year four student in this group. So they worked really well together to create this website. And since I'm here, I'll just quickly show you how easy it is to edit. <coughs> So this is also set up under a uh, education.weebly account. So I was able to create, you can create without, for free, a, uh, a number of student accounts. And what that does is it allows you to set up websites with, I think you can have up to five pages. So I've just gone back to the home page here because I don't mind messing around with this a little bit. If I want to add a title, I simply grab the title uh, element and drag it over and it pops right in there for you. You simply click and edit uh, to add images or a gallery or a slideshow, same sort of thing, or a map. So I'll, I'll slide in a gallery and I actually might put it next to the title. This is all new for me. There we go. So what this will now do is put in a, a gallery and I, all I have to do is click and it will ask me to upload photos from my computer which I'm not going to do right now because that's a bit tedious and so on. You can uh, add embed code which allows you to uh, add all sorts of things, anything that basically gives you an embed code you can add. Uh, and down as, as we go down further, you can have dividers, etc. You can add documents, Oops, back, documents, YouTube videos, files, and flash elements. Anything that's marked with a star means that you need to have the paid service to do that. But I've managed quite successfully just using the free version. You can also add uh, polls. You can add social icons and an R an RS feed. Um, yeah, so that's Weebly. I'm coming back to the room now and get rid of that. Uh, right, so I have one more place I want to take you and well, actually, it's, it's a Powtoon, but um, it's actually uploaded to our school YouTube channel. So what I am going to do, I'm not sure if I can actually share that via, <laughs> I've never tried doing that actually, sharing the video, but what I'll do is I'll just pop the link in the chat and you can go out and have a look at that yourself. And what this is, is, is it's a Powertoon, um, oops, that's the wrong place. It's a Powertoon created by uh, a student uh, and they had to explain what gravity was. And yes, there are some errors, 
but because it was an assessment task, uh, basically once they had their plan and, and their, their, their draft of what they were doing, they were left to go for themselves and um, after this child what, uh, watched her video after she had created it and I'd added it to YouTube, because once you have created your PowToon, you can actually um, upload it directly to YouTube. Um, she said, I have to do it again, I have to do it again, I've, I've made a mistake. And so she did edit it and she did go back and do it, but I didn't get around to republishing it, so there are some errors, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can see how it works. It's only very short, it took a minute. Um, we talked about what what she could change and what she could do, and the fo the pictures all came from um, the search tool within PowToo. And we talked about how fast the slides were going, and maybe green fluorescent green on a yellow background probably wasn't the best choice. So when she decided to go back and change. Uh, a couple of things that she'd done wrong. Um, she also changed that colour of the text as well. So it's a really good learning experience and I think for children particularly because they're quite visual learners. And um, it's a really good way for them to make something that they can watch and then go, oh no, I made mistakes. Um, and yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's a yeah, it was quite a good fun experience for the kids. Uh, okay, so Powtoon is done. Okay, so that sort of brings me almost to the end. What I've got here for you are some live links to yeah, Powtoon fun. Joe, play around. I suggest you play around. It's lots of fun. Uh, the blue links at the bottom are actually live links for those of you that are in the room. If you click on those, they will take you out to uh, some of my resources. So um, you can see that I've got my Wikispaces classroom there, even though there's nothing in it. I have a Symbaloo that I call Tools for Creating. So on my Symbaloo, um, there's little links out to all of the tools I've used or plan to use. Uh, it's not limited to what we talked about today. Uh, my Pinterest page is full of ideas. You just have to decide which board you want to look at. <laughs> yes, I love single loop. And my scoop it for my topic, techno teaching tools today, is where I post um, and reshare any scoop it's that I find about uh, about tools that will help with teaching and creating not just digital text but just learning text. So I'll uh, we'll move to the next slide. Um, this is uh, a slide just for some of the resources I've used today that hopefully most people have collected those along the way. Yes, yes, Vanessa has lots of Twitter stuff. <laughs> and these are my details. So uh, if you want to contact me later on, that's my email. Created by Ness is my Twitter account. Uh, my my personal web page slash blog is there for you and my general scooped account with all of my topics is also there for you. Uh, and that's it from, from me. Are there any questions before we finish up today? Any thoughts? I have a question for you, Ness. How on earth do you keep up with all of your daytime responsibilities in schools, your family, and all that you do online. What's your secret? Uh, I'm an addict to the internet. <laughs> no. um, I, guess, I guess my secret is I, I pick and choose. So yes, I hear about a phenomenal amount of tools and and I've learnt about in the last week about 10 new tools that I really want to try. But you have to be selective. So the tools I tend to keep are the tools that 
uh, particularly in my context as a primary school teacher, um, are the tools that I know that my students can, can use fairly independently because I don't want to have to be spending all of my time helping them. So I'm very selective in the tools that I choose. Um, and I think it's important that we keep finding new tools because the next one might be even more, sim uh, more simpler, easier to use. So yeah, I guess it's just about being a bit selective. Yes, understood. And filtering, of course, is the biggest part of that uh, being selective. And having to let go of things, you know, that's something that I had to learn was to just let go of it. I can't do everything. Just need to focus on a few things. And one of the questions from Ian has popped up there as much a thought as a question. How do people keep track of all the tools that they like, they use, they might use through their journeys? What's your answer on that one, Ness? Uh, I have a couple of places. Well, two of them are there, my, my Weebly site. I, I basically have tried to put everything I have on my Weebly site. So I have, um, I have put all my symbol, I've embedded all my symbol links there and I've got them in curriculum areas. I've also put, embedded my Pinterest boards. Um, and the reason I created that Weebly site, and you'll read it on there, it's called Letting the Seed Grow. I created that website purely because I had so many different places. I had stuff that I needed to bring it all together in one place. Uh, and that's what I did. I created that website and I have gathered it all there. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? But gen it does. generally it I makes... use some sort of yeah, content creation tools is how I do it. And I like the answer that Ian has given as well. He does still use Delicious. <laughs> and more recently, The Brain. I assume that that is a tool, not your brain. <laughs> Although both could be called the same. Uh, thank you so much, Ness. You've given us a whirlwind tour again and given us lots to think about and lots of tools to go off and investigate in full. <laughs> and yes, when the brain is too full, one has to empty some out so that more can be put in. Let's find out if there are any last minute comments. Oh, Danielle, a, a notebook. Do you mean paper and pen? Yeah, mind mapping tool is pretty good too. <laughs> Nothing wrong with paper and pen. I still use that on occasion. But Ness is very much uh, an interweb creature and has a wealth of information. I do advise that you follow her wherever she might be, especially in Twitter. Go follow her at Created by Ness. And thanks for all of the information you've shared so freely today. I think your audience is overloaded, but they are leaving very happy uh, because they're giving you the normal thanks. And we can give Ness even more with our official applause. Excellent. Thanks for that. Yes, those who are interested thanks, in gaining a certificate for participating You'll find those in our site as well. Boy, do we provide everything? Yes, we do. All right, yes, any final words? Uh, you can have the final uh, word and then I'll close. Yeah. Don't forget to collect your badge too, um, having listened to uh, presenter Ron this, this, this earlier today. We do have some badges, so if you're not sure about those, just post a message to us on the meeting. So thanks, everyone.